goeie dag allemaal, dit is Jeffrey Nagel en vandag doen ons die ontkennende vorm. So we're doing the negative today. Also the theme of this thing is giraffes. Like my one friend took a really beautiful photo of a giraffe and posted it on Instagram and I love giraffes in general. So that's our theme. So very important. In Afrikaans we have a double negative. The sentence must end with ni. So I added the caps in because it is important to remember that. In English, you only have the one negative. Okay, if you make it two negatives, you're making it positive. In Afrikaans, you would need three negatives to make something positive. And I think what happens is you translate from English to Afrikaans. And if you say, for example, um, I am not tired, you would just say, But in Afrikaans, a sentence has to end with ni, otherwise it is not a negative sentence. So this is the general formula that we follow using Stompy. So obviously there are exceptions. Just remember that. There's always exceptions. So subject, verb one. Then you have your first negative after your verb one. And your first negative doesn't always have to be ni. Then you have time, object, manner, place. Verb two, infinitive. And then your second negative. And your second negative always has to be ni. Now, what is important about this is I know we sort of like tell you all the time you know nothing comes after the infinitive but the knee is the one thing that does okay just remember if the sentence doesn't end with the knee it is not a negative sentence so this is just an example so the man het gister die kameelpaarde vinnig in die wildtuin gesoek om fotos van hulle te neem so if you can identify your verb one our verb one is het okay and then we do have infinitive but you know usually you would have to focus on the infinitive only change the sentence in front of it. But in this case, you just automatically add that ni at the end of your sentence. Okay, you have to. So this would change to the man eet ni gister die kameelpaarde vinnig in die wildtuin gesoek om fotos van hulle te neem ni. Exceptions. So we know in Afrikaans there are always exceptions. And the reason for this is in Afrikaans something has to sound right for it to be right. And that's the main reason for exceptions in general. Is that, you know, sometimes something just doesn't sound right when you follow the regular rule. So that's why we bend the rule a little bit. Just so it can sound really good. So when your sentence only has a subject plus a verb. Or if the sentence only has a subject, a verb. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was my phone. Only has a subject, a verb. And then a pronoun as an object and just the pronoun as an object, you will only have one knee. Okay? The reason for this being so like the one with the pronoun, we're going to do the next like exception and you'll see why. But with the Kamil Bart yet, if you had to follow the regular rule, your first negative would come after your first verb. And that's yet. But it's also the end of your sentence. You cannot say the Kamil Bart yet ni ni. So that is why it just becomes the Kamil Bart yet ni. And in general, the rule, and we'll do this next, which is an exception, is that if you have an object as your pronoun and just an object, like, no pronoun as your object, and it's just a pronoun, not a pronoun attached with something else, just a pronoun, the rule is your first negative actually comes after the pronoun. So in this case, if you look at the sentence, the pronoun is the end of our sentence, so we can just have the one ni. So the kamil part sinor, we change to the kamil part sinor ni. So this is the second exception. When your object is just a pronoun, your first negative will be after the pronoun. I just said that, so we'll just go through the sentence. So die kameelpaard het hulle geskop. Hulle is just a pronoun. It just means them. So die kameelpaard het hulle nie geskop nie. And then the third exception is the one exception where there's not a nie at the end of the sentence. That's the only time this would happen. So if you have the conjunction of of, the of of would change to nog nog and that is past tense. So the kameelpaard eet of gras of blare would change to the kameelpaard eet nog gras nog blare. So words that change to the negative. Some words have negative versions of themselves. When you have one of these words in your sentence, you change it to the negative and that will be your first negative. Remember that you still need to ach nie the nie at the end of your sentence. Okay, that's really important. So the first one we have is Iets changes to next or something to nothing. Die kameelpaard het iets gesien. Die kameelpaard het niks gesien nie. Arends changes to narends. So somewhere changes to nowhere. Die kameelpaard het arends gehaardlip. Die kameelpaard het narends gehaardlip nie. 
And then this one is so important. Oh my word, this one is so important. All changes to noch nie. All does not change to just noch. Okay, noch on its own is not a negative word. It has to be accompanied by something else. So in this case, it would be the meisie het al a kameelpaar gesien, and that would change to the meisie het nog nie a kameelpaar gesien nie. Ooit changes to nooit, so ever changes to never. So het jy ooit die kameelpaar gesien, het jy nooit die kameelpaar gesien nie. Evers changes to nare, and so evers is just like somewhere as well. And that changes to no way. So the camel part that ever's heart loop, and that changes to the camel part that Naren's heart loop. Nee. And now this is also important. Noch. So when noch is alone in your like positive sentence, I'm putting an air quote. Obviously, you can't see that. But you're in a positive sentence. Noch. Noch needs to change to nie meer. Okay. So remember, I said noch on its own is not a negative word. So he die camel part noch babas. He die camel part nie meer babas nie. Then, iemand to niemand. Okay, someone to no one. So, iemand het die kameelpaard gesien, niemand het die kameelpaard gesien. The reason I added this one in is just to show you. So, in this case, that word you had to change to the negative was the beginning of the sentence because it was your subject. Because you changed that word to the negative, you cannot add another negative after your verb one and a negative at the end of your sentence because that's going to be three negatives. And as we know in Afrikaans, three negatives makes a positive. So, altijd changes to nooit, so always changes to never. So, die kameelpaard eet altijd blare, die kameelpaard eet nooit blare nie. And then, amal changes to niemand, so amal hou van kameelpaarde, niemand hou van kameelpaarde nie. So, it's like, everyone likes giraffes, no one likes giraffes. No, everyone likes giraffes. They're the best. And then, all always changes to nog nooit. So, you will see this in sentences that... Um, all a lot of the times is in front of like another negative word. So if you do get that, like all and oit, you won't change all to noch nie and oit to noit. These two actually go together. So you would change all to noch and oit to noit. So the noit sort of replaces the, the nie. I don't think that made sense, but okay. So het jy al oit a kameelpaard gesien? Het jy nog nooit a kameelpaard gesien nie? So al iets to noch niks. Heet Susan al iets van kameelpaarde geleer? Heet Susan nog niks van kameelpaarde geleer nie? En al iemand en nog niemand? Het jy al iemand met kameelpaarde gesien? Het jy nog niemand met kameelpaarde gesien nie? Now we're just going to start with stelsen. So stelsen is a statement sentence. Okay? Um, it's just a basic sentence. It's basically making a statement. That's what it says. Okay? All rules mentioned before are applied in this. Okay, and let's see if you can do the following sentences on your own. So now, what's going to happen is, I'm going to show you the sentence. You have to try and change it on your own. As soon as you see the giraffe get on the screen, just know that I'm going to add the answer soon. So if you haven't done it on your own yet, just pause the video. Do it on your own and then just continue. So die jachters het die kameelpaard gevang om aan die miljonair te verkoop. And your answer would be, die jachters het nie die kameelpaard gevang om aan die miljonair te verkoop nie. And change this one. Kameelpaarde is ouwlik. Kameelpaarde is nie ouwlik nie. Okay. And this one. Die kameelpaard sien haar in die kar. Die kameelpaard sien haar nie in die kar nie. Die kameelpaard is ergens in die Kreer Nationale Park. Die kameelpaard is narens in die Kreer Nationale Park nie. 
Iemand sal die kameelpaard tussen die bome sien. Niemand sal die kameelpaard tussen die bome sien nie. And now we're going to go on to vraags in a question sentences. Now this is important. Always look at the instruction when you get a question sentence. Don't assume that you know what they like what you have to do. With a question sentence, well actually with everything in Afrikaans and life, just read the instruction. Because they can give you two options for question sentence. And if you do the wrong thing, even though like your answer seems right, or it would be right if they ask the other version. He ain't gonna give you the mark. So the first one is, if they tell you to skryf in the Ongenda Fora, you just have to write the sentence in the negative. So your sentence should still be a question. Okay? So skryf just means write. So they're not saying answer. They're saying write it in the negative. So it's just like a negative question. The second option they give you is beantwoord. Okay? So you have to answer the question. So your sentence should start with near. So this is where... You answer the question. You are, if they ask you, do you like giraffes? You say, no, I don't like giraffes. And that is why you have to start with near. Okay, because it's just saying no. So we'll look at these two different ones with examples as well. But as I said, always, always, always look at the instruction. So the first one is skryf. So this is when you just have to write it in the negative. So the formula changes a little bit, but all other rules mentioned applied. So the formula will change, like where we place the first negative will change. But literally everything else is important. The placement, if you only have a pronoun as your object, the sentence has to end with a knee, words that change to the negative, um, when you only have one negative, all of those things are still applied in this. It's just that the formula changes a little bit, okay? So this is how the formula changes, sort of. Because the sentence starts with the verb, you can't put your first negative after the first verb. Because um, it's going to sound weird. That's basically why. So like our new formula, but it's like in the new is in quotation marks. Because you're just swapping two things around, basically. So now your sentence starts with your verb one. Okay, It will not sound right if you have your verb one and then your negative immediately. So in a question sentence that you have to write in the negative, it will be verb one then your subjects, and then your first negative, okay? And this is the negative that doesn't always have to be me. Then we have time, objects, manner, place, verb two, infinitive, second negative that is always me, and then I don't have space to add this, but a question mark, because remember, you are still asking a question. You're just writing it in the negative. Okay, so this is an example. Het die man gister die kameelpaarde vinnig in die wildtuin gesoek om foto's van hulle te neem? So het die man nie gister die kameelpaarde vinnig in die wildtuin gesoek om foto's van hulle te neem nie? Okay, because if you followed like the basic rule for a normal statement sentence, it does not sound right when you say het nie die man. Like, I think even if you are like another language speaker, you might hear that it doesn't sound right when you say it like that. And remember in Afrikaans, everything has to sound right for it to be right. So let's see if you can do these sentences on your own. So the same as before, I will add the sentence. As soon as you see the giraffe, I'm going to post the answer or the answer is going to come on the screen. So if you haven't done it on your own yet, just pause it. So het jy die kameelpaard gesien? Het jy nie die kameelpaard gesien nie? Sal die kameelpaard haar skop? Sal die kameelpaard haar nie skop nie? So see, even though the sentence is a little bit swapped around, because the object was just a pronoun, Okay, our first negative is still after our object. Koop iemand koos vir die kameelpaard.
koop niemand koos vir die kameelpak nie. So this is just to show you that if you have those words that would change, that will still be your first negative. Kan a kameelpak baie ver sien om koos te soek? Can a camel bat nie boy fashion um koos te soek nie? So just to show you that even with the infinitive here, our second nie, well, our final negative, that's always a nie, the second negative, um, is at the end of the sentence. Now we're going to go on to what you do when you have to be answered, so when you actually have to answer this. So when you change the question to an answer in the negative, keep the following in mind. So you start your sentence with near, but remember that this doesn't count as a negative, it's just no. So that's really important. Near is not your first negative, it's literally just the opposite of yes. That's all it is. Okay, so it's not a negative. After the near, your sentence should follow stompy. So you need to swap the verb one and the subject around. Just remember, because they've asked you a question, it is going to start with a verb. Okay, when you are answering this after the near, you have to swap the subject and the verb run around because your sentence has to follow stompy again. And this also includes like the stompy with the same placement of the negative thing. So it would be subject, verb one, negative one, time object manner place verb two, infinitive, negative two. Keep the exceptions in mind. So yeah, same rules apply as mentioned before, double negative, excluding exceptions, and words that change, etc. You have to remember all of that. So you will need to change some personal pronouns. So because someone's asking you a question and you are answering it, okay, if they've used any personal pronouns referring to you specifically, okay, you would have to change the pronouns. So the one that I've just added with the sentence is yay we changed to act. So how yay van Camille father. So I'm asking you, do you like giraffes? You will not answer me, no, you don't like giraffes. Because that's not what I asked. I asked like, you know, I have to say I don't like giraffes. So in this case as well, it would change to nia ak hou nie van kameel bader nie. May also changes to yo, and jelle changes to ons. Okay. Remember, since you are answering a question, your sentence should end with a full stop, not a question mark. That's just really important as well. You're not asking a question again, you are answering it. So let's see if you can do these sentences on your own. The same as before, sentence you have to change would come up. When, once you see the giraffe, the answer is going to come. Hartlip kameel bader finnig. Nee, kameel bader hartlip nie finnig nie. Het iemand die kameel bader gevang? Nee, niemand het die kameelbaard gevang nie. Kan jy die kameelbaard sien? Nee, ek kan nie die kameelbaard sien nie. Spring kameelbaard. Nee, kameelpaarde spring nie. Sal jy nog jou kameelpaard soek? It's quite a lot to change in this sentence. Oh. Nee, ek sal nie meer my kameelpaard soek nie. Hou jylle daarvan om van kameelpaarde foto's te neem? Nee, ons hou nie daarvan om van kameelpaarde foto's te neem nie. So that was the end of question sentences, and now we're just going on to befell instructies. So this is a command 
or instruction. So when you have a command or instruction, you start your sentence with muni, okay? Because you say don't. Muni means don't. So the muni is your first negative. But now there's something else that's really important to remember as well, okay? Your first negative is a verb plus a negative. It consists of mut, which is the verb, and ni, which is the negative. This means that your original verb one will now become your verb two, okay? Because we still sort of follow stompy rules. So stompy rules still say that if you start with your verb one, okay, it would be verb one, subject, time, object, manner, place, verb two, infinitive. So it's the same here. You've added in a new verb one. So your original verb one needs to move, okay? It needs to become your verb two. And that is usually what um, learners get wrong, is that they forget to move the original verb one or to make it the verb two now. So always be careful for that. So here's an example. Neem fotos van kameel paarde. Muni fotos van die kameel paarde neem nie. Okay. So you see there, it started with a verb. Neem was our verb. Where is the neem in the answer? It is now our verb too. So always keep that in mind. Okay. Moot consists, or muni consists of moot and ni. So you have your verb one already and your first negative. Oh, I didn't even add the thing that says, let's see if you can do these on your own. But I'm adding it with my words. Let's see if you can do these on your own. So, um, yeah, I'll give you the same as before. When you see the giraffe, the answer is going to pop up. So, Susan, food, the Camille bad. This is also, sorry, just to add, it's like someone mentioning your name before telling you what to do it's like saying john pick up your clothes it's still an instruction they just mentioned your name before so susan muni di kamil paard fur ni aardlip vanag verby di kamil paard Muni vanag verby die kameelpaard hardloop nie. Also, you mimic the punctuation that we gave you. So if we gave you an instruction or a command without an exclamation mark, you can't just decide that you want to add an exclamation mark. Okay, in this case, with these like instructions and commands, you use the punctuation we give you. So vergeet van die kameelpaarde. Muni van die kameelpaarde vergeet nie. Los die kameelpaarde uit. Now this one I've added in here because there's like a small little like, you know, place where we can catch you. So just keep in mind that the sentences we give you need to follow stompy. Okay, so in this case, it still follows stompy. It just started with the verb one. Now if you look at this sentence, los die kameelpaarde uit, and we have to apply stompy. Los would be our verb one. Die kameelpaarde would be our subject. What would it be? It's not a place because it doesn't follow, you know, it's not a preposition that follows with a specific place. So in this case, when you have a random preposition at the end of your sentence, it actually means it is part of your verb one. Okay, so keep that in mind. So try to do this one on your own, keeping in mind that like those two words, los and eight, they both your verb one. What do you do? So we say, muni di kameel paarde uit los nie. It becomes one word, because it's one thing. Okay? It means leave them alone. So that is why it's one action. And that is why you write it as one word, when you move your verb one to the end. Okay? So muni di kameel paarde uit los nie. And you see, I mimicked the punctuation that was given. So now we're going on to the last thing. And that is a fashuk. Okay? So a fashuk is a request. And this is when someone is telling you, to do something in a nice way. So it's still just like, it's still an instruction. It's just said with a little bit more manners. So the word asablief, please, will be in the sentence. Oh my soul, there's no bracket there. Anyway, it's fine. We'll move on. It's, mm, it's okay. 
So you have to start your sentence with mut asablif ni in your negative sentence. Okay, the asablif also needs to be there because it's still a request, it's just in the negative form. So remember, mut is now your new verb one, so your original verb one will now be your verb two. So similar to um, an instruction, it's just that we've split up mut and ni and put asablif in the middle. So this is an example. Neem asablief foto's van die kameel paarde. Moet asablief nie foto's van die kameel paarde neem nie. So let's see if you can do these sentences on your own. Oh, I remembered it here. I didn't, I couldn't remember if I remembered. Yeah, yeah. So the same as before, when you see the giraffe, the answer will appear soon. So san food asablief die kameel paarde. Susan moet asseblief nie die kameelpaard voer nie. Aardlip asseblief vanaf voorbij die kameelpaard. Moet asseblief nie vanaf voorbij die kameelpaard aardlip nie. You would see that I'm using the same sentences I use for a command, but I just always think that because they're so close together, it's a good way to show you how it sort of changes. So it's still sort of the same rule, it's just that the part, like the beginning part changed. Vergeet asseblief van die kameelpaarde. Moet asseblief nie van die kameelpaarde vergeet nie. Los asseblief die kameelpaard uit. Moet asseblief nie die kameelpaard uitlos nie. So that's the end. I hope this helps you a little bit. Um, and yeah, tot ziens allemaal.